Good afternoon and welcome. Uh, our talk today is come join the continuous automated former security analysis in Mandalay Bay room JKL with Colin Molliner. Before we begin, I have a few very brief notes. Stop by the business hall located in Mandalay Bay, Oceanside and Shoreline ball ballrooms on level two during the day and for, for the welcome reception tonight at 5.30 p.m. The Blackhead Arsenal is in the business hall on level two. Join us for the Pony Awards in Lagoon JKL at 6.30 p.m. It's in this room. And thank you for putting your phones on vibrate. It makes it easier for the rest of us to ignore the ringing. Colin, it's all yours. Thank you. Yeah, hello everybody. So today I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about um, continuous firmware security. Yeah, my background is basic security, but also I've, I've spent a lot of years actually building devices, like embedded devices. Um, so, yeah, this basically combines like what I do for like many, many, many years. So in building, building devices is really hard. Like if you ever worked in a company where you actually build like an embedded device or consumer electronics, it's a lot of work. And building a security device is like even more work. And when, when I talk about devices, it's really like industrial, a little bit of IoT, and say customized Android devices or, or general consumer electronics. And because I work for a car company, for me, the car is lots of different small computers um, all connected together on their own on wheels. That's, that's, that's how I think about it. And the, the, your product is secure if all the little components are secure. So when we talk about devices and firmware, in this talk, I really focus on devices that have a full operating system. So you have a your kernel, you have a user space, you have actual file systems. And your firmware consists of like, yeah, that combination, kernel, file systems. I don't really, in this, in this talk or work, we don't really look at, say, like, um, like those like sm smaller device where you just basically have one blob that just some starts a number of tasks and have a little bit of data. Everything is mixed together. You don't have really um, a differentiation. So basically, this covers mostly like devices that like run some kind of Linux, for, uh, for example, like any kind of Android device, and like similar devices, say like a, Q a QNX based device would basically be, be handled exactly the same way. Yeah, and these days you just have firmware everywhere, like every little thing has firmware in it. And firmware is really your product. And if, yeah, and your product is what's in your firmware. So if you think about firmware security, you really look at um, multiple things that have to be there and play together in order to have secure firmware. So we can start saying like secure boot, like so you wanna have something that validates your kernel and file systems before you, like during boot. You wanna have the production version of your configuration files. Um, you want to have production binaries, so you want to have no debug or development or test binaries or your normal binaries without those features. Um, and then you want to have all of your um, production access controls, so file system permissions, labels. You want to have the right cryptographic material. Um, so you want to have your production version and not something your developers use. Um, and of course, you, of course you want your hardened code. So you want production builds of every binary. You want hardened, uh, hardened options, no symbols, and so on. So if like all of these things play together, then your firmware is, is, getting, is getting secure. And yeah, for this talk, I just like uh, Googled a little bit around for CVEs that specifically mention firmware as like, or, like firmware bugs. And if, if you look at this, you can see like, oh, there was this device, the, the makers of the device forgot like their private RSA keys in, in their file system when they, when they shipped the firmware. Or like another example, like, um, the, the ETC shadow file was like world uh, readable. Um, or, the, or this last example where it says like, oh, we found this like undocumented SSH server running on, on this device we bought. And then you can see like later, oh, they actually removed it. So it seems, yeah. So there's like very, very simple things where you maybe don't think about it. It's not like the exploit like in your web, in your, um, in the web browser, uh, the web server that runs on your device. It's like all the little, little other things that can hurt you way, way more. So how, how, do, how do you get like those kind of bugs? In general, like people think, oh, when you develop 
develop a product, you just have your developers, you have your CIs, your testing, everything like runs smooth. You go from prototype, development, testing, you do a little bit of QA, you have your pen test, and then you have your product, you just sign it and ship it. But of course, it's not like that. Anybody who ever worked um, in software or like device manufacturing, you know, like you have a new feature, and then you have to disable something to the bug, to the bug something, you add another feature, it's like, oh, we need to open this network port because we have a new thing. And it's like, oh, some developers really need to like debug on device, so you add like an SSH server. And then QA wants some feature, and then you remove some functionality. So like there's really constant change, and a lot of, it's just like everything changes all the time until you have your, your final thing. And just being able to secure a, a product while all of this happens is, is just like a lot of work. And basically one thing you really want to prevent this is like this ripple effect. If you like ship something that's bad, so maybe maybe you ship something where you, um, you have like none or really like partial working security controls. Maybe like you ship a, a defective product because maybe your security is so strong and like your um, certain things don't work because you didn't test that like in any circumstance like a specific thing can like read a file or ex access like a specific network port. Um, or maybe you accidentally cripple your update because maybe you shipped like ROM public keys. Um, so basically, you really want to prevent this because it's, yeah, it can create like a really long term negative effect like on your product and company. Um, and yeah, it's easy to like lose your reputation and like maybe you have to like recall products. Or maybe not recall, maybe you just have to like, yeah. Um, maybe you have to like completely tr uh, trash them. And it's like stuff like this like happens, like you can read about this in the media. So in order, what, what do you really need to do? So you, of course you have to bring in automation because if all of the stuff changes all the time, um, so you want to have something that you can use to automatically look at your, uh, your, your security. And I really like to talk about security QA because security is one part, but you also need to like have the, assure that the thing that your security is like has good quality. Like security and quality could really go hand in hand. So we looked at this and was like, yeah, okay, so we need some a tool that we can use to like automatically perform security checks. And then with this tool, you're, you need to deploy it in strategic locations in your development flow. And I'm gonna go through the tool, how we deploy it, and like what are like the, the benefits. And of course, you need to take the results and do something with them. Just like knowing that like something is bad doesn't really help you that much. You really want to yeah, feedback that information to whoever is like building the device. So we built this tool that we call a firmware analyzer and it's really like a tool for security, um, QA for firmware. And, as we, and the, base, the really basic function at here is you have some rules that your experts create and those rules are enforced, and you basically get a report. Um, the rules are really enforced on individual file system images of a firmware. I will get, go into like more detail what, like how we look at firmware and what the different components are. And you really want to like enforce things like type ownership on files, like, um, and you also want to look at file content. So is this the right file? Does this file contain so and so? Does this file not contain something? Or you want to like run maybe an external program to analyze and like a specific kind of file to get more information. And the really the big use cases are you want to run in CI so that on every build you you um, you look at the firmware and can like flag problems. So developers can immediately like they don't get their PR merged if if you find things. So that's really good. And then of course like in all modern devices. Um, you basically have signed updates, secure boot. So you really want to like prevent signing like bad firmware. So basically you, pu you can put, the, put a tool like this in front of your production signing system and you only sign um, firmware that like passes. And of course things like acceptance testing, you buy, you buy products from third parties, you want to look at the firmware. Um, and you can also do that. Yeah, basically, um, yeah, we open source this. Um, since today, I will have another link at the end of this, the, the slides, but yeah, this is like not, not a product, it's a completely open source tool. Um, we take PRs 
and so on. So on the main goal really for this is we want to prevent high impact changes from going into production. Like no, no debugging features, no reconfiguration, and really prevent this ripple effect and most likely you spend a lot of effort building security features into your product and it would be like really sad if you like ship something and like due to some mistake maybe like feature like security features get disabled or maybe security features disables um, part of your product and it's really to like create confidence in the security of your product because you have a lot a lot of things to do and um, that should help you um, Additional goals of this is not only, we not only want to like prevent and like the shipping something bad, but you also want to have visibility. We, you always want to see what's going on. Um, so, and when you have like just a piece of firmware, it's, yeah, it's, it's hard. You want to like, you maybe even don't want to know into, um, versioning information, security parameters. Um, of course, a tool is built for automation. You don't want to have like people sitting there and like typing something and like manually analyzing and like, so you want to like really have the system that you can, yeah, integrate into, into your development pipeline. Um, and for this reason, for example, we, we produce machine readable output we can just like use and post process. And also collaboration. You want to like be able to share like your experience and knowledge maybe with other product teams in your company, but like also externally. So it's also built for that, that you can very easily share like um, checking rules and, and so on. So the one, the one big thing, like we, for in the scope of this like tool and like the system, we really don't care about software vulnerabilities. Like, so this tool is really not to find like bugs in your binaries or source code, or we don't like scan for CVEs in, in your, in like, yeah, in your software stack. There are so many different tools and products you can use, and you probably like already have something to like do source code analysis or binary analysis. Um, if you really want to use both together, the firmware analyzer has like a scripting engine and you can very easily plug something in and you can combine. But this is not yet another like we find um, binary, uh, we find um, vulnerabilities or bugs in source code or binary. So it has nothing, nothing to do with that. And if you just like look at a very, very simple invocation. So now I'm gonna just like walk you through like what's like a very standard workflow and show you all of the options and then later at the end we're gonna show how we actually deploy this and use this in real in reality. So basically, we start. You basically have a little have a configuration file, and I will we'll go into that in detail. And you have your file system image, and you run it, and then like one of your checks will flag something, and you know okay, this one of your rules triggered, and that's the basic functionality. So when we talk about firmware. Um, we, I really talk about file system images because basically what is firmware? We have a kernel file system image. All of them are bundled together in a, like something like a zip file or a CPIO archive. Um, and the firm, our firmware analyzer really targets um, factory or full firmware updates. We're not really looking into like delta updates or like during the build stage really what comes out at the end because so depending on how you, how you build, you can really only tell at the very end, like this is like the final stage that you're gonna ship. Cause just in the way you like, stuff gets bundled and created um, during build time and like all of the build systems are different. Um, and the nice side effect of this is that at the end you have automatic support for commercial off the shelf devices. So if you just buy some device, get a firmware update, you could look at it. Um, um, yeah, so why do we actually look at the file system images versus just like some files? Because of course, we're like not only interested in the content of the actual file, um, but also in all the metadata, file, file owners, types, permission, attributes, something like SLinux labels, directory structures. And the nice thing what we can do, we can actually compare entire file system images against each other. So if you have two different versions of the same image, you can just say, hey, what changed between them? And that's like even a completely automatic feature where you don't have to do anything, which gives you, which you can all not do if you just like look at single files that you maybe like extracted from, from um, like a, a binary block file system. Yeah, and so file system, uh, file system, uh, uh, firmware analyzer basically has, you need a little bit of infrastructure, so you have the actual executable, and then you have um, something that we could just call like check.py, which is like a simple wrapper, which like implements like firmware unpacking, because 
all, really depending on your device, like all, all firmware updates are like, they're just different. If you look at like an Android uh, update versus, I don't know, say like a, from a TV, from a smart TV, like this firmware just looks completely different. So the unpacking part, that's, that's, that is not something like we do, but that's like, if you build a, build a device, you know how your firmware looks like, so. Um, and then you have configuration files. It's basically just like all the different checks. And then you have like this file tree files. It's basically a dump of the entire file system um, where you just have meta information about every file. And those together com um, basically build your infrastructure. So yeah. And the configuration files uh, and file tree, that's basically the, the variables that like change. You want to update them. And the actual workflow looks like this. You, have, you take your firmware. You unpack it, and you have get all of the different um, file system images, and then they get uh, analyzed individually. You get your nice report at the end, and then you can do some post-processing, and then maybe you combine them at the end. So let's look a little bit and how, how this tool actually works. Um, so basically, yeah, as I said, it, it works in file system images, but we, the tool is uh, built to like analyze them without mounting them. Um, you want to run the tool in CI and maybe in places where you don't want to like, want, like have um, r uh, mount anything or like have root access. Um, currently we support a bunch of different file systems like all the X file system, VFAT, SquashFS and so on. And also like a local directory. So like if you just can unpack something and get a bunch of files, you can also treat that directory as like a file system. Um, yeah, the output. It's, it's JSON is like really easy for post processing and automation. A lot of a lot of tooling, especially if you look at um, like cloud cloud based um, log services, they all have really nice JSON support. So you can like do like also awesome stuff at the end with that once you reach it, you reach like your cloud service, which I'm also going to talk about. On the, ba the basic output is you have offenders that are basically violations of configured uh, configured rules. Um, Basically, if, if, as soon as you have like one offending rule, your anal analysis like fails and it's like, yeah, um, this is not what we want. And then you have informational output, which is basically non-fatal checks. That's so basically for visibility. And you can also do like rule testing with that. And one of my favorite features, actually like this data feature, basically you can extract data from different files of the file system and they end up in the report. And you can like get really, really awesome, awesome visibility into your, into your firmware. And you can do like very interesting post-processing with it. Um, this is just like a, a, a very simple example. So you, if you go from top to bottom really quick, you see like, yeah, this was like an X file system. We have the, the full name of the image, we have the digest, and then you see like data, for example, there's like build information, uh, versioning information, and some informational structures, and we have like yeah, a few failed checks. So. If we, if you like go go and like start building a configuration, that would be like just in the, in the global config is basically you have like a file system type, some options for that, and you can select basically your driver. And all of the file system drivers are just like implemented using like common like open source tools, so you don't actually we don't actually have to like implement like file system parsers. Um, internally, we, every every check is run against like this abstract file. So basically, we have like a virtual file system inside um, this tool. So um, checks don't really need to know anything about the file system type, and it's also really extremely easy to add like new checks to this engine because you don't have to deal with anything but an abstract file. Um, yeah, and so we, um, yeah, normally would start with like this like very global checks. It's like very easy to understand. So say flag any SUID file, flag any world writable file. Um, then you can say like files on this image are only uh, should only be owned by this following u um, user and GID or a set. And you so I guess have like a list of bad files. So like hey, in this production firmware, you probably don't want to in include like things like TCP dump or whatever like fits into like whatever you think doesn't need to be there. So it's like a very easy to understand um, initial, uh, initial configuration. And then we can model things like direct, like the metadata of every file. For every file that you want to check, you don't have to do that for every file, of course. Um, you can just like say, hey, this file should be owned by this user. It could, should not be empty. 
um, it should be like this mode. So you can um, model like key, key, uh, key security relevant files. And like the, this, this example which I put in because of the, 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 the slide that I showed you in the beginning where like um, ETC shadow was uh, world readable. And is that something like very easy? Like um, a uh, something like that can very easily slip like somebody changed like permissions on your ETC directory. And it's like something very easy to catch. Um, file content is basically the, the, ma the, main, the main option to like analyze the actual the content of your file. And we have like built many different modes so you can like say apply this regex um, if it matches or not matches, then we, you will flag that. Or you can say, hey, we want this very specific file to always be this, uh, this very specific, have this very specific content. And you do that by just saying, this file has to have this like SHA-256 digest. And like JSON becomes more popular, so we can actually also natively understand JSON files. So you can actually say, in, in this specific file, there's a JSON structure that looks like this, and this specific value has to like correspond to like your configured value. And you can just like run an external script. So if you want to like have some very specific thing you want to do, you just um, configure um, and run this run a script and whatever the script outputs um, is um, what's happened. So there's like a few examples. So the first, if you go from top to bottom, the first is just like, yeah, we want to make sure a specific um, file system is mounted but non-executable. Very easy check. So you just apply this like regular expression. If it matches, it's all good. If you go to the next one, it's like, hey, you're, you're over the air updates, uh, you're over the air um, certificates. So like your, your, your public keys for and, and certificates for like updates. This file should always be this with this specific digest, so like very, very specific version of a file. And then if you go to the next one, you see, oh, we want, we want to make sure we don't ship um, unstripped binaries, so we can just like run the self script, and as you can see, like file doesn't have to be a file, you can just like, hey, execute the script against every file in a directory. And you say like, yep, yeah, this file is not, is not stripped. And then other things like, um, and just like, hey, we want to make sure um, you have a proper like DM Verity key configured. Um, and just like just a few examples of, of what you can can do with this, and, th and those kinds of rules are like extremely easy to like build and and experiment with. Um, yeah, and then the ex data extraction that I talked about basically has almost the same functionality. You can like have a regular expression with a capture group, and you can say like extract me this part from this file. Again, um, natively read JSON, or you can again run a script and use the output. And then you can really say like, yeah, get, for example, get the version and put it into our data output as version. Um, and then you can, in the end, when you can read the report, you actually see um, what are the outputs of your checks to like what is actually, what does like the, like say version number or build type tells you. And that's like really, really easy for visibility things. Yeah, so like every time, every time this tool runs, we generate something that we call a file tree, which is basically just a gigantic list of all files with all permissions, um, owners, and this looks something like this. So like, we'll ge um, generate um, gigantic files that has like every little detail about your file system. And the nice thing is when you run it, when you get a new firmware version or a like, new revision, you can just like compare those two files and you say like, hey, there are some new files or some files were deleted or files changed um, permissions. So it's like a very easy, a very easy way to just like keep track of, of changes over time. Yeah. As I said, yeah, you can also just like run scripts. So if you want to have um, a little bit more custom checks, the firmware analyzer will just like extract that file from a directory. Um, I extract the file and dump in a temp directory and the script runs against that, so the script also doesn't have to know anything about the underlying file system. And then you can like build um, cool things like, um, yeah, detect like if files are stripped or like if they're like um, DEP or ASLR enabled. You can see like, yeah, does this maybe contain private keys or say you have an Android device and you can basically pull out every APK and just like run your custom checker against it. So there's a, a lot of different things when you, what you can do with this. Um, yeah, so normally when, 
when, when the tool runs and you have a check it will, uh, and the check fails, then you, it produces like what we call an offender. Basically you say, this file should have this file permission. It doesn't, you say, that's, that, that's a bad, bad thing. Um, and there is this thing that we call informational. It's basically non-failing, non-failing um, extracted information. And it's just like to, to like see see what's there. And sometimes, so say you're in, uh, you're already like in production, and you want to like add more checks, and maybe you don't want to like immediately make it a failing check. So you can set basically every test. You can just say, yeah, just set it to informational only, and then like instead of failing, it will just like give you um, an informational entry. And it's like really nice to like test out new new checks. Yeah, so now that we have like all of the different checks configured, um, yeah, the, the post-processing is basically where you say like, okay, we, we run the, we extract the firmware, we run the tool, we get reports for each different file system, and then we can maybe do some checks on top of like extract the data or combine just like the reports. Um, and yeah, you can do you can do stuff like um, compare compare like values across different file systems. You can do like maybe statistic an analysis of like file types and so on. Like there's a, lo a lot of different things you can do here. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna walk through like an example, and I I really just wanted to like find like a, a random user debug Android firmware. Like, we don't use this device. I actually never see, saw, saw this device. I was just like, hey, I want to have some Android firmware that is like not a production build so we can go through and like show a bunch of interesting things. And it was really, it's a demo for the tool, not really, we didn't try to find bugs or anything. So, in the beginning, um, your, your check tool basically has to like do the unpacking. And there's lots of different tools for Android. We can just like unpack and reconstruct those sparse images to get just like standard file system images back. Um, so you got like all of the all of the different images. And if you know Android, you know like boot image is like not an actual like file system. It's just like it's a combination of, of the kernel and like a lambda. So you also have to extract that and dump it in a directory. And then you have to go through basically and make a custom configuration for every file system. Um, we're gonna go, like quickly walk through uh, two of those. So basically say, okay, so this is Android, so if you want to like definitely check for SL Linux things, um, there are certain SUID binaries which you want to whitelist. Um, we know common UIDs on Android, it's like 1000, 1000. 2000 and so on. We want to like ex um, have all those files. See, we don't want to have um, SU installed. Very, we want to uh, make sure the specific OTA certs are installed. Um, and we want to um, extract a bunch of like information, say like Android properties. And that's another feature I'm gonna um, show you a little bit later. So we basically, you can write checks once and then just include them into like other configuration. Here, if the, the, for like a boot image, that seems that it's something that's actually not a file system. We just extracted a bunch of files of this like blob into a directory. So you say like this is of type directory FS. So we'll just firmware analyzer will just treat the the root of that directory as like a file system root. Um, yeah, there, and then there's you have a bunch of checks again and, and, and yeah and a bunch of data extracts. Um, yeah, so I, yeah. If you now look into like some, some specific Android configurations, um, it's basically what do you want in like a production build. On Android you basically, a production build is called a user build, so you want to have your RO build type equals user, and you want to have like RO secure and RO debuggable set to um, production values. And you could very like write, write these, um, 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 small uh, these checks and we actually like that's part of the open source release we just have like different checks for like different kinds of Android builds which you can just like include then in a configuration file then, and then we of course want to ext uh, extract all all the different properties for example the build type um, build tags build flavor and something like the security patch level um, yeah and so then you just like run it you have like this check script does like all of the legwork for you, it, like and extracts um, 
um, the file system images, reassembles all of the different parts, um, unpacks, boots, and then it just like runs um, firmware analyzer on all the individual parts and um, generates a final report. In this case, the check fails because this file is, um, is a user debug build, but we were like checking for user builds. And so if you just go through the report, you can just like see like very easy in the top, it's just like the firmware, the file name of the firmware, and then you see this, the, all the different sub, um, sub components like the boot image, the system image, the vendor image, and you see like every one of them contains offenders. So if you dig in a little bit closer and look at like the offenders just like for, for one device, you see like the build properties indicated this is not a user build. And the OTA certs is a different file than we actually wanted. And files like uh, xbin su exist, which we did, do not like want, which we said like this is not a, not a file that we want. And then the, the data, so we said like, hey, extract all of those interesting um, pieces of, 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 proper, uh, of properties. And then you see like immediately anybody who ever like saw, uh, like looked into like Android firmware, you see everything you really need to know. You see the build fingerprint, the device name, the security patch level. So you can get a very easy understanding of what you're looking at. Um, yeah, on like test keys and yeah, it's like it makes, um, makes things very easy. So in this case, the, re the result is it, this is a user debug build, so it failed the test because we configured like it for a user build. Um, and with one really uh, one look, it's like you, you see everything. So it's like really awesome visibility. You see like the fail checks, and you see all of the versioning, build flavors, and so on. So that I think that's pretty awesome. Okay, now we have the tool. We have, we know how it works. We know what we need to build for, for like infrastructure around it. But the tool itself, like if you don't really deploy it um, in your in your in, um, uh, uh, deploy it like in your um, company, it's like not, it's not really, yeah. Like running it manually is like only, it's like not even, you don't even get halfway there. We really want to have it like in an automated way. So I'm gonna talk about what can you do like in a development environment, production signing and so on. So in development, really the goal is um, to prevent like development moving forward with like bad or incomplete information. Because developers really want to do the right thing, but they are not security experts. So you want this, if you run it every build, you can provide very easy feedback during development. And you just have it as part of, part of your unit test. So like if your CI invokes like make test, you also run this at the end. And then it's like, and you can make developers very easily aware because it's like, yeah, you can't, you can't have, like, say, SUID binaries in a specific, like, device. Um, so some examples. Um, so, for example, like, SO Linux really breaks assumptions about file access. Missing on the, uh, a missing label or the wrong label is basically, yeah, this should read, like, wow, well, my, my file is world readable, but why can't I read it? Of course, um, because you have SA Linux. So it's like one very easy check that you can do and it like stuff like that is like very easy and just like um, to help you to like un unblock, unblock um, development um, without like breaking, breaking security. Or file, file permission and ownership. It's like, yeah. Okay. Your, your software just like wants to read a file and so the software doesn't care that the file is like world writable, right? But the security person cares about it. So you can very easily just like configure, configure the this, this script and uh, configure this check and then CI is like, yeah, everything works fine, but you should change like the permissions on this file probably. And basically, yeah, that's just like uh, a screenshot from, yeah. So basically you build it, you put it into your CI and then you just like see uh, output like this. And you might want to disable like certain kind of checks. For example, you don't need to like calculate the digest of like every file system image in CI because you're not really want to ship it. So that doesn't really help you, but it would slow you down if you like have it on, um, because you really just want to have like all all of the all of the checks. But uh, yeah, nothing that you really need to record over time. Yeah. So <laughs> production signing. So. If any, what happens when you sign uh, a firmware with like your production keys? That basically means it will run on every device of that specific class you ever shipped. 
and you really don't want to like sign like something that like that is insecure. It might um, cause huge damage and use problems. Um, of course, like you can have things like roll break protection, so you can make a fixed version, and then from that point on, you can never go back. But it, everything really depends on 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 like how your products work. Um, so, but you really want to do like production signing after you have completed um, testing, development, and everything. That's basically the final um, stamp of approval before you ship. And yeah, what, what are things you might, might want to do? So you want to really make sure you have a production build. You have, want to have your, your right certificates. Um, you want to have all of your like hardening features on. You don't want to have like development tools on it anymore. You want to have like, your production configuration files. So basically, what you can do on your production signing server, you have a, a pre-state, which basically is firmware analyzer. You submit um, your firm, final firmware image to the signing uh, to the signing um, server. The server like runs r runs the checks, and if none of the checks fail, it goes on and like signs the firmware, and you get you get it back. If checks fail, then you say like, yeah, we we can sign this, um, and you get like. You can take the report and maybe send it back to the person who, who's, who, sign, who like tried to sign it. Um, so it's like a, a very easy like pre-step to like prevent very simple m mistakes that could have like a really bad uh, uh, bad impact. Um, so that's like a, a, a really nice thing. You can also do acceptance testing. So say you buy devices from a third party. Um, and then it's probably you do like some initial acceptance testing where you figure out how everything works. You find out um, what's a good what's a good state. You go forth and back with your, with your supplier. And at some point you create like this configuration file where you can capture like a known good state. And every time you get like a revision, you just um, um, reanalyze that uh, image to see if anything anything changed that you might want to know of. And of course, you should like um, extract as much data as possible, um, so you can like actually like have like a good record. So you can also automatically create like a record for like firmware. Every firmware you get, you can create this like big gigantic JSON blob, and you can just keep that for your record. And yeah, you can find uh, find um, changes um, before before like they bite you. Um, and it's and something like that is it's very nice. Um, Say, say you have the service, um, your supplier uploads the firmware, you get the report that goes into your database, you get some email notification, and you maybe see like um, some new files or some changes, and you can very easily then circle back with that supplier and say, hey, we found you did this and this and this, what's this intended? Please tell me more. And without like going through like do, doing any of this like manually, just like it is it is just runs and you get like all of this like really awesome information and it also not only like gives you the insight it's just like also so much faster than like doing this manually um, and yeah if and you don't think you have like only like one like one device say you have 10 devices 20 um, that you maybe have to take care of like this is like a huge huge benefit um, so, yeah, yeah. Basically, yeah. That's I already I already covered that. So you can like it's really easy to go like to to fastly iterate also with external people, um, and you get really good like visibility into like firmware revisions. And of course, you can also do like kind of vendor assessments. Say you buy some device off the shelf and you want to like do some some testing. Um, so this would be more like something that would help you like in some manual analysis. Um, as like one of the, the many steps on like something like vendor assessment. Um, yeah, and actually, so say so de you deployed you deployed your tool like in front of um, your production signing and like you have this um, 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 firmware security um, analysis service and you can and if you just like take the this like JSON output and just like pump it up to your like favorite like cloud based um, log service or maybe hosted log service. Um, you can do like really, really interesting like post processing where you can automatically like trigger, uh, have triggers on different like um, offenders or informational or data points and have like automatic alerting, reporting, maybe create tickets. Um, and that's, 
and that's like really why we have like structured output so you can very easily integrate this into other things and it, this like really showed like a lot of a lot of great value so say you have this tool you want to use it basically the main the main thing you have to do you have to build an unpacking an unpacking step and create some config files so basically in your check.py version you have to like build a firmware unpacker and maybe add some post processing and so on um, and what you really want to do you want to like you want to like create like um, config files for all the different um, file system images you have to select the appropriate um, file system type um, start with some like really easy like global check rules and then like slowly add more specific rules and so on and move as many many checks into like uh, into like checking libraries so you can like very easily use the same check like for your production and for your like development like analysis step yeah so yeah in order to do this you just like yeah basically you can use this like include function very like, very simple and the really nice part is like you can also share like rules with yeah, you can just like open source like your checks and keep maybe some really product spe uh, product specific rules to yourself. Um, so it's really meant for like sharing. Yeah. Yeah. In the future, we want to like just support a, a little, little bit more, more file, file system types, types um, 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 some scripts, scripts like, like also like analyze kernel config. Um, some people might know CheckSec. It's like a, a really cool Linux tool to like check um, elf binaries to see if they're like supportive of ASLR and DEP and maybe like if you like build Android device you want something like an APK checker so it's like all things that would be nice to have yeah yeah and in conclusion you can say like we we um, we like really like uh, really happy with this tool like we would, we would deployed it like in CI for like a major product or a major like project um, we get really gate production signing for multiple devices but you always have to like understand this is just like one piece of the puzzle this only having this is not 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 solving your like issues you still have to build your security controls you still have to like audit code you still have to do the other work it just is just like helping you to automate certain aspects and it really has has shown value um, we caught a bunch of like things that um, would have not been so nice and yeah but if you ca caught them they never happened that's that's why you have things like that so um, yeah it's it's really if you if you go back to like this initial thing like you're maybe um, yeah a little bit unstructured like development process or it's like not unstructured it's just like the not how you do it like you, things just like change over time all the time every day and we still as a security team want to be on top of it and like make the best the most secure product possible and with that like we were like really it's really much harder to miss like security relevant changes automation of like feedback during development like seems super awesome and this is like yeah and it like creates a little bit of confidence and of peace of mind and like your everyday like efforts and um, improving the security of your products yeah few of my coworkers who like actually like contributed code John and Graziano many thanks to them and a lot of lots of support from various people at Cruise and I had like various interesting discussions over time with like various various people so the, we have a little blog post also about this we describe the all all of the features and why and how we deploy deploy this um, tool the open source release includes like example files um, also like an end-to-end -end, like analysis um, 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 tool for like Android um, firmware based on this um, yeah that's it um, thank you for your time if you have any questions I think we have like five minutes left happy to answer anything <laughs>